This is a challenging landing. The challenge is that while we are over the southern end of the aquifer, that's a virtually finite water supply. Because of the ability to tap that resource and use it for irrigation, uh, a lot of it's already been used. It's disappearing at a rapid rate. Uh, we use it in far excess of what the recharge can be. And today we're dependent on that for agriculture as we know it, but that's changing. The Ogallala Aquifer extends all the way up into South Dakota, Nebraska, um, Kansas, and they have a lot more water in some areas than we do here in West Texas. The Ogallala Aquifer in the southern part of Texas is cut off um, by the, the, the area over here that's been drained and um, eroded, and over here by the Pecos River. So really this is the only extent that, that, that's left. So we're not getting recharge anymore from the Rocky Mountains. When people hear the word aquifer, they just think water. It's a giant Coke bottle underneath the, the, the ground. And you just stick your straw in it for your well and you, you, know, you suck your, your, your water up through your well. But that's not the case. What aquifer really looks like is imagine that Coke bottle and you fill it up with little stones and, and gravel. And then what your aquifer is composed of are those stones and rocks and gravel, and the water just exists in the interstitial pore spaces of those rocks. That together comprise the aquifer, and that aquifer is contained um, in an area underground. So the aquifer might be two to four hundred feet below the surface where you're standing right now, and then it'll be about a couple hundred feet thick in a, in a good area, and then you'll have clay. You'll have a clay layer, and that will be your aquaclude or aquatard, and then you'll have other sediments below that. So your aquifer is contained in a limited area. Well, what's happening here is we're going back in time about 10 million years, and imagine, if you will, the Rocky Mountains are twice as high as they are today. And so there was great amounts of erosion happening. And so with that erosion, uh, large amounts of uh, uh, sediments and debris were coming off the Rocky Mountains along with that water and they carved great channels across the Great Plains. And you're seeing a couple of those channels coming across West Texas, all through Bailey, Lamb, and L Lubbock County, uh, Parmer and Castro particularly, and even down here across the bottom, representing these great channels. And then over time, those sediments filled in those channels. So what you're looking like, what you're looking at here is as if you're um, on the Colorado Plateau looking down and down the Colorado River into these old paleo channels. And so the, this is what the Llano Estacado looked like to about 10 million years ago. So now let's come fast forward again and I'm going to take this one down and show you what happens next. Those uh, channels are all filled in now with sediments. So where you see the darker blue is the thicker sediments. Where you see the lighter blue, it's where it's thinner, maybe 20, 30 feet at the most of all the rock and all the water that's in between those gravels. And that constitute, that, that uh, comprises our aquifer. So our aquifer could be up to 300 feet thick in those channels, okay? So that's where our water is. This is where it's not so much. So if we take a look now, at the land use. The land use for our area, when you flew over, you saw those giant circles with the uh, cotton inside them. Those are center pivots, and those are irrigated with those large sweeping arms. And each one of these circles represents a center pivot. The large ones are the full sections, 640 acres, and the smaller ones are the quarter sections. Notice where these center pivots are located. They're over where those dark, thicker blue areas of saturated thickness are. Now, these producers, did not have these maps or know where the channels were 10 million years ago. So how did they find the water? Well, back in the 50s when the technology was developed to uh, develop pumps and, and pump water from the aquifer, if your neighbor found water under his, under his property, what are you gonna do? You're, you're gonna drill for water too. So over time, these producers through trial and error mapped out where the water was and you can see a, a thick amount of center pivots going through this area and across Gaines County, but in other areas, they, it was not worth putting in a center pivot. There was not enough water in the wells to, to justify that. Okay, so we know where the water is being used for irrigation. Let's put that together. 
So we've mapped the aquifer, how much water there is over time, over 20 years. And the little gray circles represent those center pivots, and the darker oranges and reds represent where the aquifer is changing or declining. So the darker the, the color, the more the decline. So over this uh, um, period here between 1990 to 2004, some areas have declined anywhere from 80 to 100 feet of aquifer decline. Remember, we only had, back in 1990, about 300 feet at most to start with. So we've had some counties lose about a third of their aquifer over a 15-year period uh, up in Parmer and Castro. And notice, it's all in the southern part. In the northern part, where we have the greens and blues, that's zero, very little change at all. So that's that plateau with the very thin sediments where there's not much water to begin with, so there's not a lot of pumpage going on. Off the plateau where we have those thicker channels, the water is going down because where you have water is where we could use it. Okay, so that, that's uh, the story up to this point. Now, let's, let's take a look at uh, um, the aquifer in a different way. We, we broke out the aquifer into areas that are 30 feet saturated thickness and less. And that's an arbitrary number where, for the most part, you don't find large-scale irrigated agriculture. And by that, we mean center pivots. Um, you'll find you know, some dry land agriculture going on. You'll find a little flood irrigation, some different, different things, but not so much the center pivots. So everywhere where it's 30 feet or less, we mapped in red. So you'll see the red areas are 30 feet, and you won't see so many center pivots there. Makes sense. And where we do have the center pivots, and every place else where there's a green background, we have more than 30 feet saturated thickness at this time. Well, since we were able to map the aquifer changing through time on a year-by-year -year basis, what we did is we could calculate the rate of change of the aquifer over that period. And we took that rate and we looked at it through time and said, well, how is this landscape going to look um, 20 years into the future? In 2030, what areas will get to 30 feet saturated thickness if everything else remains the same? If we have the same amount of precipitation, they pump the same amount of water, they grow the same amount of crops. And we know that's not going to happen, but so this is merely a projection, not a prediction. So in 2030, which is 20 years from now, the areas that would be red increase significantly. These areas are projected to get to 30 feet saturated thickness um, if all those parameters remain the same. We know that won't happen because people adapt and adjust. We wouldn't have production here for so long, for so many years, if we didn't uh, have adaptable, very smart farmers. Um, and when you think about the history of the Great Plains out here, it hasn't always been this way. Um, back in the uh, 1800s, we had large expanses of a uh, grazed range, the Great Texas cattle ranches were all over here. We didn't have cotton and center pivots. Uh, but then there were some in incredible droughts, and that wiped out the, the grazing, uh, the grazing um, uh, industry. And then that got replaced with the dry land. Agriculture came in, and there was a cotton grown here, but it was not pumped from the aquifer. And then in the 50s, when the technology to, de to pump water from the aquifer uh, uh, de developed, then we saw the transition to um, the irrigated ag. And that too we look at in West Texas, which is an incredibly dynamic area. Um, we project that will look different in the future too. So it's not always going to look like this. And now you look across the landscape and what do you see? Very large wind turbines. So the economy is going to change and develop and adapt through time, and we expect this landscape to change again, too. So um, this is just a projection right now, not a prediction, but this is what things are looking like at, at the moment.